guys and welcome back. Today it's all about the farmer market and we are about to make roasted chicken. Mm, I like that idea because when I go to the farmer's markets, you always see the guys there with the rotisserie chickens. Is that what you're thinking? It's, if it's one thing that is common to every farmer market, always a chicken rotisserie. So here I have not a big bird. Huh? I have like enough for two people, two, yep. uh, two Californian. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How many Europeans? <laughs> so that, that's probably like four Europeans, two Californians. <laughs> and we're going to start to season that. So I want it to be as natural, as farmer markety as possible. All right. So we're going like to use lemon, mm -hmm. some fresh herbs, and some nice pepper and butter, of course. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is a little bit season the inside of the chicken. So I have here a little bit of herbs. So fresh herbs is super important. I mean, we're talking about the farmer market. So fresh sage over here, it goes right in there. And just push it and bring the sage in there. And when you're going to cook, the steam is going to be infused by the smell of those oh, herbs. Oh, you're going to have some herb steam. Exactly. So these so are I some nice here. like Thanksgiving herbs, right? Exactly. Sage, yeah. rosemary, well, thyme. No, not really Thanksgiving. I call it summer herbs, actually. Summer in Provence, you find all those herbs. Okay. Thyme, rosemary, and sage. Now, rosemary and thyme can leave winter sage. It's actually fragile. That's true. And I love yeah. adding herbs how you are and to every dish because they just add so much flavor, you know, without having to add anything that's not as good for us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so now we have some fresh lemon. Yep. If you can cut a couple of slices of lemon. Sure. And as you do that, I'm going to start to season the chicken with some nice sea salt. So about how long is it going to take us to cook this whole bird? I know that some people are get nervous about that, of make, overcooking it and making it dry. Yep. So that takes about an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Give okay. or take. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to keep this one for later on. Okay. And now I'm going to tie it up a little bit. I have a little twine here. And when you tie it up, it compacts the chicken so it stays nice and moist. Okay. So I'll also show you a little bit of your scales there. Makes it pretty. So that makes it cook evenly, right? When you say moist. Yes, evenly, be... but also because the legs now are compacted with the breast, mm -hmm. then uh, it cannot dry right there. So that's oh. how I, I, very, very I nice. feel like it keeps it moist there. And this is kind of nice. Like if you were to make this on, say, like a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon, um, if you did buy like a big chicken or you eat like a European, you're not going to eat the whole bird in one dinner. Or you could do two at once since you already have your hands dirty, you already have everything out. This could be meals for several different meals, dinners, breakfast. Yep. You know, you could just take it, shred it all off the bone, and then you could add it to omelets, you could add it to salads. So it can really get you a lot of different meats. Oh yeah, absolutely. One roasted chicken is good for many, many, many lunch. That's right. So I need a lot of twine here. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. It's very old school mm -hmm. way to do it. I'm gonna start over here and I bring the twine right in the middle between the two breasts. Okay. And then I'm going to go in the other side. Oh, I haven't the seen this way before. And I'm going to bring it back in. And this time, by doing this, I can twine a little bit the You're wings. Going over the wings. Over the wings. And over here in the middle, I can just give a little loop there. Okay. That keeps Hold the twine. It Holds it to place. Yeah, exactly. Brings it back. Looks slippery. <laughs> it's a little slippery, but it, as long as everything stays together and it looks very pretty too. Okay. Bring it that back. That is nice. Right in the middle there. And just tie it up. Tricky little thing. It's like a well, puzzle with twine. Yes, it is, you know. <laughs> but it's not like it's going to fly away. That's like, uh, do you remember those <laughs> little like finger, finger trap games where you would play with the different... It was like a game. Cat's Cradle. Do you remember that one? No. Um, never have it. That, that was, that was my time. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a string and you'd hold it and you'd play with two different people and you can make all these different shapes and it was a pattern. It was oh. fun. I miss that game. <laughs> well, where hair it is. Very nice. And in this point, I'm going to add uh, lemon right on the top right here. Oh, I like that. So it's just going to hold it right in it's place. It's going to hold it and so the lemon is going to give pretty. a nice flavor. Nice. I can put a little more salt in there too. So why do you put so much salt? Because the bird is pretty big, and so it's the only places I put salt is right on the top right there. So it's going to go inside the meat, so okay. it needs enough salt to kind of like season the whole bird there. And will it help making our skin crispy? It will, all? it will yeah. actually crisp it up a little That's bit too. But because the skin is pretty thin, I like to add a little more butter. Use a little twine here to keep the butter on, on position. And a little bit on the legs there in the middle there, so it can slowly 
get delicious. Okay. And so you're, of course, using the butter that I love. It's like a pasteurized butter, right? So it yes. has all those additional good nutrients for us. Yes, absolutely. You did that for me? So, no, I didn't do that for you. <laughs> oh, I do that okay. because naturally the butter tastes very good in France. Yes. And I wanted to have those great butter flavor, specifically when it browns up later on, right in my chicken. You can see it's even, it's more yellow than yes. like normal butter when it's It's more concentrated. I'm going to put that right into a pan. And this is a perfect home Beautiful. here for this chicken. Now, before we put the chicken in the oven, mm -hmm. I'm going to have you help me doing a little bit of garlic, garlic. cloves there. Okay. That's gonna give some nice flavor. So we're just flavor. gonna roast them. Yep. Yeah. So I have uh, here an aluminum. I'm gonna do one with you. Okay. I'm gonna put salt a little bit. <laughs> salt, okay. Yeah, you could put some paper, very fine. Okay. Finer. Here we go. Pepper. Perfect. So we're gonna drizzle them with some avocado oil. And since we're already roasting the bird for so long, this is great because you can get this roasted garlic flavor, which really does take, you know, we're gonna roast these the whole time with the bird, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's gonna take an hour delicious. and a half, so a they're gonna flavor. be soft like butter at the end. And I just uh, tied it up just like a, a garlic cloves and I'm putting right on the side there. And in the oven it goes at okay. 375 for about an hour and a half. Okay. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna steal my knife back. Okay. And we are going to make some sweet potato fries to go with our bird. Sounds good. Sweet potato fries. Sweet potato fries. So that's very Californian. A it little is. bit healthier than your usual suspect there. Yeah, sweet potatoes have are a little bit better for us, um, opposed to a sweet, you know, a normal potato. They don't affect our blood sugar quite as much, so they're still like a nice good starch for us. So what I'm gonna do, I have three different types of sweet potatoes here actually, so this is kind of fun. So I'll cut them open so you can see. So this is considered a white sweet potato, or what's actually a real sweet potato. So people think, especially in California, that sweet potatoes are the orange ones, but those are actually yams. And then I'm just cutting them right in half. They are kind of a little bit... Those little pom frites. Dense, huh? When you cut them by hands like this, they're very rustic, so you could tell you that go. you didn't buy them already made. Exactly. Do you leave the skin on and everything like this? I do leave the skin on because it has extra fiber in there that you know that I like. And um, once you bake them, you're not going to really notice too much. So what I'm going to do now... So the skin has some quality in there that... Yeah, so it you. has fiber, which is what is in vegetables, right? And so the skin just has a little bit more fiber, which is good for our digestion. It's good for all of those little gut bugs that are living in us. It's going to help feed them. Um, so we like that. So what I'm going to do for these is just cut some. And I do feed my bug very, very <laughs> it's often. It's important, actually. It's really important. <laughs> so these we're just cutting into some wedges. I have my very short knife today. But a long knife would be ideal for those long potatoes, yeah. We're gonna so put these. remember people, long potatoes, long knives. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna cut the purple ones. So I oh like boy, to do I a can mix. start to smell the chicken already. Oh yeah. In a few minutes, but start to smell already. All those herbs, smell delicious. Chicken rotisserie, cannot get any better than that. That's right. Me. So for the sweet potatoes, I got different colors because there's different nutrients in all of the different color foods, right? Even in potatoes, like even in the same species, it will make a difference between the red so. and the white. You actually might be calling me on my bluff. I actually don't know if there's a difference. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> but I still like to mix it up. Is that a real science here? If Vianna? this was like an orange and some blueberries, yes, there are for sure oh, differences. An orange so and I think blueberry. I would still follow it, yeah. Okay. All right, so these... I will have to take your words on that one. But. That's right, you will. So we're just gonna drizzle these with a little bit of avocado oil. Would you mind drizzling that for me, Lionel? I won't mind at all. So I'm I can bring move it over here, here. yeah. Here we go. So we're going to drizzle them with some avocado oil and then we're just going to do, and I'm doing avocado oil because it's better for cooking. I, yes, olive oil is still good, but this is a little bit more heat stable. Yeah, and um, then you don't want any flavor in that necessarily. Very true. Yeah, it's very neutral, kind of like a canola oil, but much better for us. And we're going to do a little bit of pepper. Do you want some salt too? A little bit of salt, please. Okay. And I'm going to add just a little bit of cayenne. Just give it a little kick. Ooh, cayenne. Cayenne. Let's spice it up. And then these are gonna go into the oven, nice and hot. So I like to put them in at 400. 400? 400 degrees if we want them crispy. And we're gonna put them in for 15 minutes and then we're gonna flip them over and then do another 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. 
maybe we could take a quick break and we come back we're gonna put all that together and more so don't go anywhere it's no better place to be than on our children. <laughs> 